Uh, hi, Joel. Hi, everybody. Uh, we had a new release, uh, 118. So I, like usually, I have a presentation. So let's jump right in. Um, but before we actually go to the new stuff, I want to use this uh, screen time opportunity to share a tip of the day. And today we have two tips. The first one is to use the recommended test runners. Um, and there are different options depending on the language and the ecosystem you are living in. So for Node.js, we have our very own player test. For Python, we have a set of our own uh, PyTest fixtures. For Java and .NET, uh, we recommend using JUnit and NUnit, uh, respectively. And the second tip of the day is to always use locators. Locators are a center piece of our API. They are very handy. If you don't know what locators are, uh, head over to this link and uh, read the beautiful documentation we have for it. OK, new stuff. So we have a little bit of agenda for today. Uh, so let's start right away with a locators API. So Joel, do we know what locator is? Uh, I think so. It has something to do with elements. Yes. Uh, okay. So quick refresher, uh, locator. You, you can consider locator to be a rule uh, mm -hmm. how to fetch an element from the page. You usually create it with a page.locator call. And uh, once you have it, it kind of points to a place in the page. Okay. So we're pointing to that image. Yes in this example. So as of today, you can do many different things with locators. You can click, you can hover, you can do like all these APIs you can see on screen. This is what you already have. Now in 118, we add a new thing. Mm -hmm. And it is tiny on this screen, but this is actually huge in its value. OK, so you're changing locator.locator. Yes, I'm changing the constructor. There is now a second argument to yeah. a locator constructor. Mm -hmm. And uh, inside of this argument, you can pass a text. And uh, this will create a locator that selects this element with this text inside. OK. Uh, and yeah, I feel like we can already do that with the text selector. Yeah, you can actually do this with text selector, but it's much more convenient using this second argument and option. And to demonstrate, I'll show you on my simple uh, example. I, I'm skeptical. OK. Uh, so let's say, for example, I have this abstract shopping cart on example.org, mm -hmm. and I have a bunch of items in my shopping bag. Mm -hmm. I have a pencil, a helicopter, and a cushion, but I want to write an automation that will remove helicopter from this uh, shopping cart. Well, uh, okay. And here is the helicopter, and mm -hmm. uh, it has a delete button, right? Mm -hmm. So it is important to say I want to remove helicopter, not the second item. Okay. So like, okay. I feel like I could do this without your has text. I feel like I can make a text selector for the text delete. And yes, then this... I get the second one with the nth selector. And... This... Yeah, well, you, you did notice we have many delete buttons here. Yes. But if you do the second one, you will always remove the second item from the shopping cart. OK, but you don't want, want to move the second one. You want to move specifically the helicopter. It's a helicopter, exactly, okay. yes. So let's do this with the new API we have. Mm -hmm. So. I will, like, let's say dot row selects all the rows in the shopping cart, like mm -hmm. this. Now, I can use this has text option to specify the locator to only select the row that has the helicopter inside of it. OK. And uh, you do notice that my helicopter here is all small caps. Yeah. Even though my helicopter in my web page uh, has capital H. Mm -hmm. But since we do case and sense, if uh, something much, it doesn't matter. OK. OK, now I can actually chain locators. Mm -hmm. I can do dot .locator and uh, select an input with text delete. Oh, OK. OK, I see where I was. So this is different from a text selector where you would, in the first line, when you if you did text equals helicopter, you would select the helicopter text itself. Yes, but exactly. That text does not have a delete button in it. So instead, yes. you're selecting the entire row that has a helicopter in it, but then you're looking at a different place in that row to get the delete. OK, I'm on board. I like I like has text. Good recap. Awesome. And finally, yes, I can I can click it. You see, like okay. this. Uh, so this is a new API. And uh, well, since 118, it is available in all the languages, in mm -hmm. Node.js, Java, uh, .NET, and Python. Cool. OK. But historically, um, this has not been the case for some of our features. 
So now I want to do a short uh, recap of uh, other features. Mm -hmm. So first of this feature is web first assertions. Now, web first assertions is this combination of assertions and retries. So for example, this expert locator to be visible will retry and refetch this element from the page until it will be actually visible. So we call these web first assertions. And these have been available for quite some time, I think since we 116. Now, this has been kind of an experiment, and it proved to be a very successful experiment, very handy for all kinds of automation. So with this release, we actually bring it to other languages, mm -hmm. to Java and Python, and it will come to .NET in future release. Cool. Awesome. Next feature, oh, yes, and we have documentation links mm -hmm. uh, for each of these languages. Next feature is API testing. Joel, you remember what API testing is? Um, this is like uh, like fetch, right? Like we're, we're getting URLs and we're seeing what comes out of them. Exactly, not fetch basically, but yeah. much more cool. And we had a video about it in what's new in Playwright 116. So it is basically a way to access and assess your REST API uh, mm -hmm. from inside the language uh, that you use to write your uh, tests. Mm -hmm. Now, Similarly to web assertions, uh, this was a very successful experiment for us. So now we bring it to Java and Python as well. And .NET is coming. Awesome. And uh, next up is documentation links, of course. And mm -hmm. the next up is tracing update. And okay. uh, tracing, quick recap. Yeah. Joel, uh, you, what's tracing? What's tracing? I'm going to put on the spot here. So tracing is. Um, when you run your test, you can turn on tracing and we give you a trace file and then you can view it in the trace viewer and you can see all the steps that ran in your test and all the code in your web page and any errors and the yes, screenshots yes. and the clicks and um, you can see the performance information and the network requests and the CSS and the dominant everything. Yes, thing. yes. It's very, very handy for postmortem debugging and this right. is what the trace viewer looks like. Mm -hmm. So since Playwright 117, we were bundling your test sources as part of the trace artifacts. Mm -hmm. But now we also do the same thing for Java, Python, and .NET. Which okay. means... Oh, okay. These are my test are, sources, not my website sources. Your test sources. We, we were bundling your website sources before as well. So, so you are going to show me some Java code. Yes. So, code. so for example... Oh. Uh, <laughs> this is a trace viewer showing some trace recorded from Java. And mm -hmm. on the right-hand side, you have this sources panel. And inside this sources panel, you can see your actual your test code that yes. is actually this aligned is with your playwright actions. Yes. I didn't write my website in Java. I wrote my test in Java. Exactly. Yes. And I, I imported Java util arrays as list. All, like all, all the good stuff. Yes. Yes. <laughs> OK. So uh, these were languages update, and this is uh, all the new stuff for Playwright 118. Mm -hmm. Quick recap, uh, four things. New has text option for locators. Very handy, probably use it daily. And mm -hmm. then web first assertions, API testing and tracing update coming to all the Playwright family languages. OK. So cool. big release for languages. Yeah. OK, so if you like what we do, uh, we have a bunch of social presence. Uh, we have a Slack channel, very active. We have a Twitter, uh, please subscribe. And we have a YouTube channel uh, here. And if you like what we do, please give us a star on GitHub. Uh, thank you. Great. Thank you, Joel. Thanks. Thanks. Bye.